Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, AMA says FAR 107 won't affect most of their members, FAA boosts safety standards on the use of lithium batteries on aircraft, Viking Aircraft Engines helps disabled pilots project. I'm Brie Krause, welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. As we are finishing up production of Airborne, a late breaking story hit our newsroom. Jim Campbell reports. Thanks, Brie, and hi, folks. Details are still pretty thin, but there's been an explosion this morning during the pre launch test of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket at Cape Canaveral. The routine pre flight test of the rocket took place at Space Launch Complex 40, close to 0900 local time. The launch was scheduled to boost a $200 million Israeli Amos 6 telecommunications satellite into orbit this weekend. Building several miles away shook as a result of the powerful explosion, and a plume of dark smoke still spreads over the Cape. A Cape Canaveral official said that the pad was clear when the explosion occurred, and SpaceX has confirmed that there have been no injuries. An official statement released just a few minutes ago stated that, quote, SpaceX can confirm that in preparation for today's standard pre-launch static fire test, there was an anomaly on the pad resulting in the loss of the vehicle and its payload. Per standard procedures, the pad was clear and there were no injuries. Some initial statements suggest that the accident may have been caused by a launch pad anomaly itself and may not be sourced to the launch vehicle. Since this is an accident that has occurred on the ground, all relevant evidence is at hand which will aid the required investigation significantly. SpaceX has conducted over two dozen launches from the Cape facility since 2010. As we all know, folks, space is hard. We'll keep you updated. More details to follow. Well, there's a lot of buzz about the new FAR 107 regulations regarding non-recreational operation of small unmanned aerial systems. The Academy of Model Aeronautics is telling their members that this new regulation probably does not apply to them. While this new federal rule applies to many small UAS operators, the AMA says in a blog post that its members flying under the AMA safety program for recreational operations are not affected by FAR 107, which includes the requirement for the small UAS operator to hold an FAA-issued remote pilot certificate. The AMA also said a member who chooses to obtain a remote pilot certificate can still operate in accordance with and within AMA safety program when flying their model aircraft for recreational and hobby purposes. However, the AMA reminded its members that FAA registration rules do apply to the operation of their remotely controlled aircraft. As new lithium-ion batteries are approved for the use on U.S. airliners and business airplanes, the FAA is reportedly applying more stringent safety standards for the power cells that power many critical systems on those aircraft. The Wall Street Journal reports that the higher safety standards apply to both rechargeable and non-rechargeable batteries, as government documents show that many of the recognized risks are similar between the two types. The concern is that lithium batteries are more prone to internal short-circuiting, overcharging, and other problems that can result in fires or the release of toxic or explosive gases. The FAA is requiring onboard safety systems certified to prevent damage to the aircraft under any circumstances from high temperatures, gases, or fire. A joint industry government panel is completing work on new standards for lithium batteries under the auspice of the FAA's Outside Technical Advisory Panel. After the break, a Viking aircraft engine will power a special aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Last week, we reported that EAA Chapter 1083 and John Robinson, the founder of AV84All.org, have joined forces to build a Zenith CH-750 cruiser in Salisbury, North Carolina, to benefit all pilots with disabilities. The EAA Chapter members will launch a Zenith build project on September 10th of this year at Rowan County Airport. John Robinson said, quote, EAA Chapter 1083 is literally making a dream come true for AV84All.org. Without their help, it would take a lot longer to get this project off the ground, and they are making flying for the disabled a reality.
Zenith Aircraft will provide engineering oversight to help customize this Zenith CH-750 cruiser to fit the needs of all the pilots with disabilities who are involved in the project. Now something has been added to Robinson's dream as Viking Aircraft Engines has just announced their desire to join in on the project. They are donating a firewall forward package which includes the Viking 130 Honda-based aircraft engine, all installation components including the cowling and engine instruments. This is a great example of recreational aviation working together to enable the disabled to fly. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. Our Airborne Partnership Initiative can shine a light in two directions. Our partners gain by working with us to find new and innovative ways to use the resources we have to offer, and in turn this allows us to learn from them. We at ANN only have to look in a mirror to see that innovation often comes in small steps from surprising places. An example of this started a few years ago when we worked with the Aircraft Electronics Association in a rather visionary program that started with live presentations and interviews with product vendors, and grew to be so much more. From this, we have developed new programming with a major concept that we call our Innovation Preview Series. Our innovation previews have turned into a massive news teaser, an invitation to build serious buzz, and it promotes all the amazing innovations that take place within our partnership members and our Aeroverse. We have created highly successful innovation preview programming for the AEA, Sun and Fun, and EAA AirVenture, and these programs will continue. We have also recently announced that we will create innovation preview programming for the dynamic UAS industry at the AUVSI Exponential Convention in the spring of next year. And yes, there are more AIPs in the works. Stay tuned. Our innovation preview programming is continuing to grow, and so is the Aero News Network. After these messages, GoGo promotes from within. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. GoGo, the connectivity company, has promoted John Wade to the role of Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of GoGo. Wade will be responsible for GoGo's operations, quality control, commercial airline account management, and commercial sales. Air Force senior leaders are casting a wider net to ensure more active duty enlisted airmen are eligible to apply for the service's RQ-4 Global Hawk remotely piloted aircraft program. The Air Force says this gives airmen an opportunity to excel in a new way. It's been reported that Kamil Gennadinov, the head of commercial aviation services for Boeing in Russia, has been named as the president of Russian Sukhoi Civil Aircraft Company. He will be charged with creating an after-sales service system for the Sukhoi Superjet 100. Unique announced the availability of the Breeze UAS. They say it creates an all-new mass consumer brand category. The Breeze flying camera is controlled via a mobile device and has five easy-to-use flight modes and is able to share to social media channels. After five years of competition by more than 40 different teams from around the globe, NASA's Sample Return Robot Challenge has reached its final stage. The top seven teams will compete for the $1.36 million prize September 4th through the 6th. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A new commercial drone has been introduced by Capsbury, which focuses on the commercial use market. According to the company website, the Capsbury Drone 2.0 includes features that have been requested by commercial customers. The flight time has been increased to 30 minutes and the aircraft can cover up to 150 acres at an altitude of 400 feet. The aircraft can be safely flown in winds up to 25 miles per hour with gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Small UAS News reports that the aircraft is a fully automated drone system. It will take off and fly a pre-programmed flight path without any input from a human operator. It includes an onboard LiDAR sensor to allow it to autonomously avoid obstacles like buildings, cranes and trees. 
The aircraft carries a customized Sony industrial camera that can capture more geospatial data for detailed aerial 3D modeling. According to the company, it will also upload data wirelessly to the Kespri cloud via onboard Wi-Fi. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.